Hey guys, welcome back to another week of the 51 Yarns Spin Along. My name is Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast and this is week 11, which is long wool. For those of you who are new to this channel, welcome. Um, I do a podcast episode every so often. I might have to do one of those pretty soon because it's been a while. Um, but I also do a spin along episode each week which is inspired by the 51 Yarns spin along that Ply Magazine are holding, which runs in conjunction with their book. I am not affiliated with Ply Magazine in any way, shape or form. I just find it a really useful resource. And if you enter their spin along with a photo posted on Ravelry, Facebook or Instagram with the relevant hashtags, you stand the chance to win a year's subscription to Ply Magazine. Very, very cool. Anyway, on with this week's episode. This week what I've chosen to spin is this, which is Leicester Longwool. And this is um, part of a batch which was sent to me by members of the UK Spinners Group on Ravelry. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, a few years ago, I just kind of put the word out and said, hey, I'm new to fibre processing. Um, I've got a drum carder and hand cards and hand combs and I want to experiment with using them and try out different types of fibre and, you know, see what happens without processing entire fleeces because that's very, very uh, involved so, and I didn't have the space for it either. So um, they sent me batches of different fibres and I have a fair amount of this Leicester long wool, which is awesome. If I look at an individual lock, it has a nice long staple length. So long walls are considered to be, you know, longer than your hand, which this one just about is. Um, it's very nice and lustrous. It has a good ping. If you don't know about the ping test, you basically hold the lock at either end and you should hear a little pinging if it's a nice sound fleece. Uh, if you hear any kind of crackling or uh, if it sounds like the fibre is breaking, it's not such a great sign. So that's what I'm going to be processing today and I'm going to talk you through how I go about processing it. I've got my hand combs which I'm going to be using. These are the Valkyrie Extra Fine, I believe. So they are two rows of tines and just in case you're a little bit worried, the cats are actually locked out of their own room right now, which is probably going to confuse them a little bit. Um, but when you're using combs, I don't think it's such a great idea to have um, things you can't control <laughs> around the place. So uh, if you have small children or pets, I would probably recommend that you do this somewhere that they can't get to. So I've got the base of my Valkyrie combs c-clamped onto this storage unit um, i'm then going to slot the comb into position on there and then i need to start loading up the combs with fiber i'm going to take a batch of locks and what i'm looking for in each batch is that i'm dealing with locks that are a similar length so you may actually want to separate the locks out to start with so that you can see exactly what you're working with because some lengths will be a lot longer than others. As an example, those two have just come off the same section of the fleece. So you can have pretty significant differences in length. I mean, that one's almost double the length of the other one. So I'm just separating them out so that I've got roughly similar lengths. The problem we're trying to deal with multiple lengths in the same um, batch of fibre as you comb it is that the whole idea of combing is to remove any, um, first of all, removing any debris, any sort of VM or second cuts, but it's also to get rid of any shorter sections of fibre It's not necessarily that shorter sections of fibre are bad. Within a particular fleece, you're always going to get longer and shorter sections of fibre and shorter locks. Um, the problem is if you try and deal with all of those in one pass of the combs, then you're going to have more waste than you would if you did this sort of slight separating process first. 
So I'm literally just going through each bundle of locks and just kind of roughly separating them out so that I know how long each lock is. And I'll then try and comb them all in one batch of similar lengths of fibre rather than try and deal with them all in one go. And at the moment, I think I've got sort of three main lengths of fibre. So I'm just dividing it up into little sections over here. I always save a couple of locks which are kind of characteristic of that fleece for my record keeping. That way when I've finished my yarn I know roughly what the original fleece was like. And of course although it should be fairly obvious which end is the cut end and which end is the tip end, I am just making sure that when I'm arranging these piles that I've got each of the locks with the tips facing towards me. This part of the process takes a little while sometimes, especially if you're dealing with a full fleece, but I think it's absolutely worth doing because you just get so much less waste than you would otherwise. So I've got them separated out into different lengths of lock. What I'm going to do now is to start lashing on to the combs. Lashing on really just means um, taking each of the locks and putting them onto the combs. That's all it is. So I'm going to grab, I think, some from this pile here. And I'm just going to start lashing these on. So what I'm trying to do is get just the very end of the cut end in the combs. I don't want too much overlap. Sometimes when it's quite a curly lock, got quite a lot of big crimps in it, you might find that the cut end of the lock has kind of turned under on itself. So sometimes it's easier to feel than to see. The reason why it's so important to just catch the butt end or the cut end of the, the lock is if you catch it in too far, potentially you're losing a lot more fibres than you would if you literally just catch it in like that. Okay, so I've got my comb loaded with some locks which are all pretty much the same length. So now I'm gonna do a couple of other steps. Um, step number one is to just give it a little bit of a spritz. Um, I've just got some water and human hair conditioner in here. A little bit of a spritz just allows it to try and keep the static under control a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my other comb in my dominant hand and I'm just gonna start passing it through the tips of the fleece. And I'm just passing it through sideways. So I do a sort of swinging motion. So from my right, cutting through to my left. There are lots of different spinning teachers and lots of fibre prep teachers out there who will tell you lots of different things about how you should do this. Um, this is the method that's worked best for me. And what I'm trying to do as I pass through is just to catch the very, very tips. I don't want to get too far into the lock because again, I might create more waste than is really necessary. So I'm just trying to catch the very tip of the lock. If I get stuck, so I've passed through here, but I can't pull that. It's really, really difficult to pull. I'm just gonna take it back and go in again. But it just means that I went too far into the lock in the first place. This is the first time that I've really combed very, very long wools. Pretty much everything else that I've done has been medium to short length. So I'm sometimes finding it difficult because the, all of the locks obviously hang downwards. If your fibres get trapped down here, there's going to be basically no movement. So just every so often, I'll put my hand around the back of the combs and just lift those butt ends up a little bit 
so that they're not all wedged against the bottom of the combs. And this might go without saying, but um, d do be extremely careful when you're using these because these things could be pretty lethal. Um, I know people who've managed to get infections and all sorts from combing wool where they've just kind of got a bit over enthusiastic and swung it and managed to get it, you know, stuck in their leg or something. And I'm also making sure that in each pass, I completely separate the combs. It's kind of like carding, you don't want to fold a length of fibre back on itself. When you get down to this stage where you've got, um, in my case I've got one bit that's still quite long, I feel like there's probably more I could get out of that, but the other bits are quite short, you may want to introduce a little bit of a twist. So going through, just doing a little bit of a twist and seeing if I can get more off that way, or indeed combing back through in the opposite direction to the way that you've been going, um, or combing up or combing down. Just that change in direction can sometimes help you to get more usable fibre out of it. Okay, so I think I'm down to pretty much everything I'm gonna get off that. So if I just take out the waste from that first pass, you will see there isn't too much there, but what there is, is neps, and I wouldn't have wanted that getting into my finished yarn. So second stage, so I've done one pass, but you can see that there are still quite obvious locks in there. So the second pass, again, I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a spritz of water and hair conditioner, just tame the static a little bit. So the next pass, I'm basically gonna do exactly the opposite. So instead of swiping sideways, I'm now gonna swipe down to allow the fibres to catch on to the rear cone. Now this is where I need to be quite careful to make sure that I'm not getting too much of the fibre stuck behind the tines. After as many passes as you think you need to get a nice combed fibre, I'm going to swap this over and then I'm going to use Diz to pull the fibre off. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take the very end of the locks and just give it a little bit of a twist to make it easier for it to go through my Diz. My Diz is just a little heart-shaped button. Um, the only reason I have it is because it's concave in this middle section and that really helps to pass the fibre through. So all I'm doing is just pulling on this end, moving the diz up, pulling again, and I don't want to pull too far because I don't want the staples to separate. So as soon as I feel any kind of thinning happening, that's when I stop and then I start pulling again. I want to try and get it so that there aren't any thin spots, but it can be very difficult, especially when you get towards this end. You need to start doing shorter sections. Again, I'm just fluffing those fibres up at the back to make sure that I'm getting as much usable fibre as I can out of this. There we go. And you'll come to a point where it just naturally doesn't want to give you any more fibre. So that is my finished top. I'm going to start from this end, which is the butt end. Just lay it over my hands, wrap it diagonally around. I've just spotted a little nep there that managed to escape through the combs. I'm going to pull that one out straight away. 
wrapping it around my hand and then I'm just going to catch this bit between my fingers and just pull it through which gives me a little nest of fibres with the end that I'm going to start spinning from sticking out of the nest of fibres. Okay so um, I have finished combing my wool and I now have a little stack of these. They're always very pleasing I find. Sappy, give me that skein of yarn you little bugger. <laughs> um, that's the, the little sample from last week. Um, I need to put that somewhere safe so that Safi can't get to it. You naughty girl. Um, okay, so I have finished with my combing and I've got a lovely little set of these little bumps of uh, hand combed top and I'm now gonna spin a little bit of that. So the way that I kind of wind these um, bits of top around my hand I always have a little loop sticking out the top so I just need to pull that loop back through and then I know that that is the end that I'm starting from. Okay so because this is a long wool um, it's going to require me to have my hands further apart than I normally would and I'm going to need to experiment a little bit with twist. Most of the long wools people think of as not being good for anything other than, you know, rugs. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. They can be really good for um, things like lace weight. But you just need to remember that you're dealing with a much, much longer staple length. And so you just need to keep your fingers a lot further apart. So I'm going to try and spin this as roughly a lace weight. So I've got a moderate amount of twist going in at the moment. I'm on the smaller of the two uh, whirls on the medium whirl on the matchless. So let's give that a little ply back test, see what happens. Um, I would say that definitely needs much more twist. I'm just going to try speeding my feet up because that way I don't have to go about changing whirls. If I was spinning something more than just a sample then I would absolutely change whirls but in this instance, if I can get away with just traveling a bit faster, then let's just do that for the sake of sampling. Hello. Hello, okay. One of the things that I haven't done, and, and maybe this is something that I might do in this week's spin along, is to look at the idea of matching the amount of crimp to the number of twists per inch. So if you haven't come across that technique before, essentially what you do is you take a, uh, a lock of the original fleece and you count how many um, crimps per inch there are and you basically try and match the number of crimps to the amount of twist. The great thing about um, combing your fibre is that pretty much all of the VM falls out in a way that doesn't always happen when you're carding or certainly drum carding your fibre. In combing pretty much everything drops out but there's just the occasional little bit that I come across and I'm like oh let's get that out straight away. And unlike the semi-week last week, I am trying to make sure that I compress and pinch out any of the air. There are lots of other ways that you can spin long wool. Um, some people might use core spinning, 
which is actually coming up in a week or two's time. You've got Core Spun on the list for 51 yarns. Uh, other people might use uh, tail spinning, which we did earlier in the spin along. Um, other people might card the fibre, and you can still card it, even though it's quite long fibres. Some people will suggest maybe trying putting the locks on the carder sideways instead of kind of straight on like you would with a shorter staple. Other people will actually cut the fibre to put it through a carder. Uh, I feel like cutting it is a little bit on the controversial side. Some people would get rather funny about the idea of um, cutting the fibre up. It's kind of amazing me that even though I'm keeping my fingers really tightly clamped on the fibre, it still feels like twist is getting in between my fingers. It does kind of pass the twist along really quite easily. So I think my project for this week might be to try and see if I can sample with various different amounts of twist and then um, knit samples with those, some lace samples maybe. Um, I'm kind of intrigued to see what the optimal amount of twist is. I also think that probably next time I diz, I will use a smaller hole in my button or even make a new hole in the button that's smaller because this has produced quite a thick top and I'm sometimes finding it a little bit more difficult to work my way back across to keep it even. Incidentally, the wool combs that I use are the Valkyrie Extra Fine and I chose those from the variety of different Valkyrie combs that they do because um, there is a really helpful post somewhere online and I will try and find it and link to it in the description where it specifies um, all the different types of fibres that you might want to hand comb and it will tell you what the performance of each of the combs is like with that particular fibre. Um, I went for the one that kind of covered most of the types of fibre that I thought I would possibly want to comb. And for everything that I've done so far with them, I've been really happy. Actually, I've never come across anything that I've thought, mm, actually, that was kind of disappointing. Um, so I think they're quite a good general purpose one for me. But it might be that the types of fibres that you enjoy spinning might require a finer comb or a coarser comb. It's worth having a little look at that list if you're trying to decide. You could use this as a single but I'm going to apply it and see what happens. So I'm going to use something called an Andean plying bracelet. If you haven't come across this technique before, it's kind of magic and I love it. Normally I have a hairband around my wrist, so I normally tuck it into that, but today I'm going to use my watch band, so it's tucked in there. So I'm going up around my middle finger and back down, and then around the back of my hand, so over the top of my thumb and then around my middle finger the opposite way. So if I show that a couple more times you should see what's going on here. So around the back of my hands, over the right hand side of my middle finger and down the left hand side of my middle finger, around the back up over the left hand side, down the right hand side, and so on. Um, once you get used to that technique, you can do it very, very quickly. One thing I will say though, is if you are gonna use this technique, um, just make sure that you have um, taken whatever comfort breaks you need to take before you start. <laughs> Otherwise you kind of end up um, sort of stuck there for a little bit because 
uh, you kind of just need your hand to be near the spinning wheel. You could, if you, if the worst comes to the worst, you can sort of slide the uh, the yarn off onto like a cobble roll or something. Um, that would work. So just be a little bit careful about that. Uh, also be a little bit careful about not cutting off your circulation. So every so often you might just want to uh, take everything off your middle finger and just slide it down over your wrist and then you can just start the process again. So up the left hand side of your middle finger, down the right hand side, round the back, over the right hand side, down the left hand side. And just keep doing that and you will have a nice little Andy and Plying bracelet. Whenever I'm doing an Andy and Plying bracelet, it always leads me to think, you know, somebody out there was the first person to ever do that. And I don't know who they were. That information is lost in the midst of time, but they were a genius and uh, it's a brilliant technique. One thing I will say though, is just be a little bit careful about your estimate of how much is actually on the bobbin. Cause I have ended up before now with Andy and Pline bracelets that literally go all the way up my arm. You know, I'm like up to here with Andy and Plyon bracelets and then you are kind of stuck for quite some time. And now I take the one end that I tucked into my watch band. I can take that out. And then I've got my two ends of yarn to ply from. Sometimes the first little bit can be a, a bit tricky to kind of get into the rhythm with the plying bracelet, but you'll soon find that it comes really naturally. The other thing when you're working from Andy and plying bracelets is just to remember to try and keep it slightly under tension. So I use my um, first and middle finger to try and tension the yarn a little bit because although it will uh, it won't get tangled within the plying bracelet itself but you may get um, little coil backs happening and there we go I have just finished my first sample for this week's spin along like I say, I will probably try to um, sample those uh, hand comb tops at varying levels of twist, just to see if I can find what I think is the optimal amount of twist for it. Um, it'll be interesting to see an experiment and sample and knit up some samples as well. I may not get all of that done this week because I'm also really trying to finish the doodler before Isolde's mystery knit along comes along. So um, I'm full steam ahead on that at the moment. But I will see you again next week for Core Spun. Um, in between now and the next episode, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fiber Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. Hope you enjoyed your spin along and I will see you again next week. <laughs>